Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. Like, uh, I am very happy to be here. Like, uh, IAG is my home. I've been teaching here for 10 years now, something like that. And I'm very happy to, to join, especially on uh, your first uh, year as a director uh, because of our like super long relationship uh, along the years. Um, so uh, yeah, um, thank you also for the presentation. I will go to, to introduce myself, so uh, that's easier for me. <laughs> um, I don't know what is happening. Okay, so uh, this is a little bit what we can you can see in our in our um, web page. Uh, it is a set of uh, many different kinds of projects. Uh, we usually work with. Uh, uh, cultural institutions, uh, as uh, Danny was saying, uh, reflecting on uh, in speculative uh, futures on how like uh, uh, architecture should like work uh, uh, in order to create like more uh, democratic um, lives, uh, and we usually work with uh, uh, contemporary thinking, feminist ecology, uh, and uh, politics into our practice. Um, I'm going to explain uh, some of the projects that we are running in the office, um, but uh, first I wanted to show you uh, the office. Uh, we have, uh, like, so uh, we are uh, not very traditional, I'm going to just set the, the timer, just to see. Uh, so, uh, as you see, this is a, a, an old uh, picture of our uh, office, like this is, 10 years ago, something like that. Uh, but it is a traditional office of architecture where we have like a printer and also a, a computer and we draw sketches and so on. Uh, but it is also a place where we um, uh, experiment, where we uh, work with very different materialities, where we assemble, where we do uh, tests and so on and so forth. No? So that is like something that, that is very particular from uh, our office. No? That is also very, um, very uh, much the way that you guys work here in IAC, no? Um So uh, I wanted to 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 go through some of the projects that we have been developing over the past years and to explain you how we usually work with these kinds of institutions that uh, uh, that we work with, uh, how are the uh, commissions that they do to us and how, how we develop them. No? Um, uh, first of all, I wanted to explain you this project, uh, uh, which was called uh, Cyborg Garden that we developed in Matadero, which is a cultural center in Madrid. And uh, it, it is like a few years ago, it is 2019, uh, but I wanted to bring it back because it was the first time that we were collaborating with other disciplines uh, that we find th this crucial in our work uh, to work with with uh, with uh, other like uh, disciplines especially in these like uh, scenarios of like uh, um, of global warming and uh, climate change no uh, so this is a uh, matadero uh, cultural center that uh, it stands in the heart of an urban heat island. Uh, so uh, it is a place where heat gets accumulated as a consequence of the white spaces without vegetation and shadow that tremendously suffer the extreme temperature heat waves uh, that are more and more frequent in the city. You know? Now from February to November, this is like a, a super hot place. No, So um, <clears throat> the proposal that we did for uh, mitigating together with this uh, team of, of experts, uh, the effects on climate change uh, was this kind of like a cyber garden um, uh, with a nature-based solution in order to mitigate uh, this heat island effect and rethink the role of the public space in relationship to climate change. Um, and uh, this is like uh, culminated in a series of gardens capable of raising the resilience of the public space. No? Uh, we started this project uh, thinking of this uh, like uh, with this new, so we sometimes 
start projects out of news, out of data, out of, no, in this case, uh, uh, the New York Times published this uh, research done by uh, Dustin Rubenstein and Carlos Botero at Columbia University, uh, where they ensured that from their studios on more than 80 species of birds among the whole planet, um, climate change is affecting the promiscuity of, of several of those bird species. No? So due to the increasing instability of temperatures caused by global warming, um, um, opposite to the more classical framework of uh, temperatures, some bird species are changing its reproduction habits, both in the frequency of pairing and on the uh, fidelity to, the, to their couples, no? uh, getting to blur the limits of gender in their reproduction practices. Uh, with the aim of increasing not only the possibility of the birth of new members, but also looking for new sexual and gender profiles for the evolution of the species and the adaptation of these new weather conditions. No? So um, um, uh, the, in, in, in the prototype of the garden that we were proposing uh, for Matadero in this like um, um, pilot project, uh, we use the situation of the birds, like, of the birds uh, trying to change their reproduction habits as a starting point in order to think from architecture on how to manage these scenarios as these bird species were doing that Anthropocene is setting. No? Uh, from the apparently uh, political neutrality of science uh, to questioning the classical strategies of mitigations of, or resilience uh, in order to face climate change. No? So we try to look for this third way where environment, productivity, nature, gender, culture are uh, reciprocally rebuilding constantly. Uh, where we can reflect on our relationship with other species and look for material, constructive, and aesthetic te techniques according to this time. No, so uh, the garden for romantic crossovers uh, uh, use uh, um, uh, links uh, humans, non-humans, animals, biological entities, political and environmental controversies, and it is materialized as a non-anthropocentric cohabitation infrastructural garden adapted to the historical uh, uh, extreme weather conditions of Matadero. No? So this like uh, natural uh, artificial canopy, which is suspended in a lightweight structure above the streets of Matadero, uh, uh, would give shadow to um, this set of uh, aphrodisiac and roma uh, aromatic vegetation species that will be inhabiting this garden and creating a microclimate uh, that will uh, mediate between um, in these relationships between humans and other species. No? Uh, so there is this set of UV bulbs that allow us to perceive as aspects of the plants that we don't usually see. There is thermal lamps that will increase the temperature when necessary, when needed by the inhabitants of this garden and a set of hung soil pots and water tanks um, with the um, necessary conditions for nourishment, but also uh, to regulate the humidity of the space in order to welcome the insects, the plants, and the humans no? that would lay out in this, like uh, on the bottom of this like garden, we would have this like um, set of, um, of um, uh, urban furniture uh, that would like, uh, in this case was a uh, day bed, no? but other prototypes would be like other kinds of like, um, of uh, of furnitures that would, uh, would uh, populate the Matadero um, uh, place. No? Um, another like, all of these first set of projects that I'm bringing are uh, all having to do with like uh, other species uh, to, with, to our relationship, especially in the urban context with other species. No? Uh, in this case, uh, I wanted to explain you this project that we did last year uh, in the context of the model festival of architecture in Barcelona, which will, if you're interested, it will take place uh, next uh, month from the 20th to the 30th of April. And I think IAC is going to uh, also like uh, do things there. So maybe you're also already involved there. So uh, what they asked us to do last year was to, um, to create something in the public space that had to do with the relationship uh, uh, of uh, humans and other species in the city. No? 
So we started looking to this atlas of Barcelona, of the uh, of the uh, biodiversity in Barcelona, no? where you can find like all the uh, different species of plants, trees, birds, butterflies, fish, and all other like all kinds of vertebrates that we have in in Barcelona. No? And uh, in another scale, the planet's biodiversity is being reduced year after year. We are 8 million of species in the world, and 1 million of species in the world is uh, threatened to disappear no? in the next years. No? And cities are the focus of this uh, lack of biodiversity, mainly due to the concentration of CO2 emissions, the heat island effect that I explained in the Matadero project, and uh, the lack of, of green areas that is something that happens very much in Barcelona, no? uh, where species, and also as we um, our conclusions from this atlas, um, the species are often selected basically on with functional criteria, no? like uh, uh, if they um, generate a lot of waste, etc. No? Um, and that causes this homogenization of species of urban uh, areas uh, that generates also an insecurity in ecosystems. No? Um, so uh, the proposal that we did for this festival reflect on, on possible models of public space capable of helping to, re to reverse this situation of the lack of biodiversity. You know? So we propose this mobile device in the form of a reservoir, uh, which is home for a multitude of trees, plants, shrubs, insects, um, capable, to, capable of mitigating these effects of climate change. You know? This is what the drawing of the project that we presented for the um, Tajin Biennale last year that was curated by Areti. Uh, so um, the proposal reflects, uh, uh, um, so uh, this was the, the interior of the garden, no? where we included uh, a lot of different kinds of species no? uh, capable, they were, we curated like uh, uh, these species, uh, in terms of like we included some species that were capable of absorbing 10 times the CO2 than usual or uh, edible species um, that open new discussions on food sovereignty, you know, like uh, um, or um, uh, species that were capable of uh, um, gathering or convoking uh, other agents like uh, that are also necessary uh, to be included on the city, as, like pollinators, etc., and establishing these relationships of mutualism. No? This is relationship between species where both species that have that are having the relationship have a positive effect, no? Or uh, also generating these symbiotic uh, relationships, no? With the guests that would meet the, the facility, no? Uh, and during the festival, this uh, device uh, moved through the streets of Barcelona, uh, acting as a pile of projects of what uh, could happen, no? Uh, these are some of the images that, uh, like on the left, you see the work in progress. But then, like how, like uh, uh, during the festival, we were like uh, itinerating the uh, this portable garden throughout the whole uh, Losa de San Antonio, uh, which is this like uh, space that uh, that uh, we propose to to include this uh, garden. No, so. Um, um, yeah, I will. Okay, so um, we would imagine these like kind of uh, portable gardens as uh, uh, places where we could, uh, uh, as a new typology of a public space where uh, these uh, gardens could be moved to areas with a higher concentration of pollution or uh, it could be moved to uh, um, temporarily placed in polluted areas or more densified areas or uh, to uh, incorporate them as uh, open classrooms for interspecies botanical knowledge. No? Um, so this uh, uh, project was built from the temporary material and political possibilities of the present, but also with the intention of uh, including these uh, future scenarios that are as necessary as uh, uh, desirable, no? Um, next project that I would like to show you is this um, um, 
festival of architecture that we also did last uh, year um, in uh, uh, Rome, uh, where the, we were again asked to um, activate the public space somehow uh, in order to like uh, bring some more activity to the city of Rome. No? Um, so we started also working with the biodiversity in Rome. No? And uh, we came out to, with, the, uh, with this uh, data that there are like over 300,000 cats in Rome, uh, but just a 180,000 of uh, cats live in private homes and the rest, the 120,000 cats live in as uh, straight cats in colonies like this one no? in Torre Argentina that is gathering around 130 cats. No? Um, and that is because the laws, and we, that is what we found very interesting in Rome, uh, that the laws are protecting cats from the times of the Romans, no, and the fact that we um, that uh, laws are working with uh, non-humans, uh, we find it very interesting, and and even more when it comes from uh, uh, some years ago, no. So um, cats uh, were already protected in Rome. They were considered sacred to the goddess Diana and highly uh, regarded as pest control and also as companions, no? as, as depicted uh, abundantly in frescoes from the wealthy Roman houses in Pompeii. No? So uh, this is the colonies of cats in uh, Tor Argentina. Uh, the law of uh, 1991 uh, protects the cats of Rome. No? The, uh, a cat colony is a registered legal entity in Rome with specific rules. No? A cat colony can be registered when there is a population of at least two cats habitually living in a specific area that they are elected as their home. And um, according to this law, harming a cat is crime. Uh, cats have a right to live where they choose and it is illegal to forcefully remove them and relocate them from the place they elect as a refugee. They have a uh, right to be fed in the place they elected at their home. And local healthy authorities uh, must look after uh, proper nurturing uh, of the felling for free. You know? uh, so in this context that we found very interesting, uh, we designed this shelter for cats. You no, know? we like, um, um, Detected, detected a certain colony of cats in uh, Rome, in uh, near Austria Station, uh, and uh, we included in the public space like not just this like uh, like an architectural device that would um, work as a shelter for them, also to like to be included on in the discussions of a public space and uh, of the this particular festival, no? So uh, we um, worked with this like uh, um, CNC milled uh, MDF uh, structure uh, that we then covered with like uh, materialities and textures and colors that would be um, uh, playful for them, no? And, uh, and then we we tested it and we built it. No, so uh, no, so it has this like a uh, four uh, where they um, feel comfortable, the chains that they want to scratch, uh, the ramps that they never used. We thought they would they would use them, but they they didn't. And uh, and yeah, and then we we transported. Uh, this to Rome and it was like uh, uh, exhibited there for some years. No? Um, another project I wanted to show you is this like uh, um, uh, project that we did last year in La Casa Encendida, a very small one, uh, but it had to do again with ecology and again we were committed to work with a uh, relationship between species, in this case in the city of Madrid. No? So uh, we started looking into these uh, like uh, species that uh, are they were called when I was young, uh, like when I was a kid, uh, periquitos, and I, we used to pet them. Uh, they were imported from Argentina, and uh, we like when I was a kid used to like pet them and have like books um, of how. Uh, good they were and so on. But the fact that uh, people started abandoning them, uh, they, they started like uh, 
changing and instead of being pets they started to be uh, 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 wild uh, birds that would start populating the cities uh, especially in Spain Madrid and Barcelona and started becoming like a problem no mm, a problem uh, like uh, <laughs> so the, like there is this this like they they have been like they are considered as invasive no and they and we consider that we have to uh control this population no in madrid i think they arrived to 12000 12000 i think yeah well 6000 uh, and um there are like three main facts that are like um uh why we want to um uh con we have to prevent like to control this population it's because they are noisy uh, also because they have these super like big nests um that uh that are heavy and that could be potentially uh dangerous and uh another thing is and that is not proved that they are affecting other communities of birds that are local and uh, that they are for uh, fighting for the resources and so on. No? Um, so the government of Madrid has started like uh, um, uh, controlling this population, but the ways in how they control these populations are uh, having a lot of controversies, no? Like they're they're like because um, some because of bioethical uh, issues, no? So uh, if depending on how they are controlled, uh, people uh, are complaining or not, no? In this case, for instance, they uh, shoot them, uh, so the uh, um, animal uh, when animalists are like. Um, doing a lot of protests uh, to fight against this uh, way of uh, controlling the, the the members of the species no um, so um, we uh, we found this very interesting in terms of like uh, on the one hand uh, to bring the discussion to in this case la casa encendida which is this cultural institution in madrid um, of for instance uh, animal rights or um, to reflect on how we change the uh, ideas or the like how we change uh, on uh, the ideas over certain species no how it, they were like super uh, good when I was a kid and now they are like invasive and we have to control them or the reasons we why we have to control them like uh, is it uh, that they are noisy uh, enough reason to do it or not or so on no? um so we started like uh trying to think of architectures that could mediate amongst these controversies no and we started looking at these like uh, nests we, we find uh, super interesting no and we started trying to uh, build an aviary or a shelter for them that would be uh, less harmful uh, less heavy or less like uh, instead of being on the trees to uh, being on the floor no so we started uh, looking on how they build these nests and we tried to uh, do this collaborative like uh, work between them and us no so uh, we what we did was to create this um, structure uh, uh, with these like uh, uh, wooden sticks that uh, uh, where we would generate this shape and these holes with the size uh, that they want to that they they uh, build uh, themselves as architects uh, we wrapped it with the same materialities that they used to do and we kept this like interior in order to uh, collaborate with them in order to do the nest no and <clears throat> this would be like uh, placed on the floor and and so on no? uh, so we brought this discussion on uh, to la casa encendida on uh how we we have to like deal with these kind of topics, no? Um, 
And this is um, uh, an exhibition that was opened uh, yesterday uh, in Palau Robert, another cultural institution where also Iac has a piece. And I will uh, encourage you to visit because it's like a very interesting one, uh, which is called uh, Dream the City. Um, uh, we were like committed to um, to think on speculative uh, futures on uh, how we envision the future uh, cities uh, in uh, for so, in some years, no? Like uh, and uh, also like with with an uh, optimistic point of view was the, like the commission of the curator, no? Um, so uh, again, we wanted to uh, work uh, also to think on 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 uh, not just uh, humans that we are inhabiting species uh, cities, but also in this case in Barcelona, uh, many other species that are also uh, inhabiting the city of Barcelona. No, and uh, since we were going to look into the future, we started looking into the uh, how. Uh, in this case, the, the certification line is heading to the north. No, how uh, due to climate change uh, and to the rising of temperatures, uh, the cli the climatology of each of of uh, its um, uh, place in the world is changing drastically. You no, know? and in this case, uh, if we see the uh, Spanish, uh, the Iberical uh, Peninsula, uh, we see how. Uh, the desertification line uh, is like moving to the north, uh, especially in two. In uh, we see uh, present scenario, and then on the right we see the future scenario in two thousand one hundred, uh, where we can see how like uh, Barcelona will be like uh, having a climatology that it's like more from the south of Spain. No, so uh, we are already very like uh, used to, or like starting to listen to this kind of uh, political subjects uh, called uh, climate refugees, no? which are these people that are going to be forced to migrate to the North because of the climate change, no? because uh, their local uh, uh, places of origin uh, due to the droughts or due to the, um, uh, the hard weather conditions uh, wouldn't allow them to keep living on the same place, so they will be forced to live on the north to to um, to migrate to the north. No, this is something that we are used to listening uh, into uh, uh, applied to people, but there is also we are already seeing how due to climate change uh, some uh, species um are uh, microorganisms, uh, plants, see, uh, birds, uh, etc., are moving their places of origin uh, due to the climate change. No, so we started studying which species would be in this speculative future uh, local from Barcelona um, in two thousand and one hundred. No, uh, and this were one some of them. No? And uh, we, we curated a selection of species that we could include in this like uh, reservoir that is uh, exhibited in this exhibition. And we created a shelter for them uh, in order to protect them, in order to like uh, uh, also bring to the bring to these like uh, uh, institutions uh, nature as a political project, like and the fact that we are like uh, climate change is uh, uh, evolving with humans, but also with non-humans, no? Um, so this is the, um, the shelter that we created. Uh, and uh, again, as in, in other installations that you see, it has it is mediated by a lot of uh, natural elements, but also a lot of technological elements that would generate a comfortable uh, place for the um, for the plants to 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 live in. No, so <laughs> sorry. In this case, you see. Um, uh, 
these like uh, uh, pink um, bulbs, which are growing lights that will uh, that uh, they emulate the spectrum of light of the sun, and they would stimulate the plants to grow. Uh, and we also have this green light that makes them calm. We have also uh, music. Uh, we were like uh, composing with the, the composer um, that uh, also stimulates the growing of the plants. It, it, gener it has these also frequencies and rhythms that stimulate their uh, growing. Uh, also, like uh, there is this like uh, windows that would open in order to uh, generate some ventilation, uh, cross ventilation in case we uh, we need it and. Uh, and yeah, and, and this you can visit it uh, until like the 11th of uh, June in Palau Robert. And uh, I think uh, last project of this uh, set of projects that I wanted to show you uh, is um, uh, uh, last year, this like uh, installation that we did in the FRAG Center. FRAG is a, a museum of architecture. It's the third collection of architecture in the world after the MoMA and the Pompidou. And they are doing this Biennale. I think this is the third Biennale. Uh, in this case, it was like called uh, Infinite Liberté, uh, infin like for a, a ver, infinite liberty for a, a world uh, with a feminist, feminist democracy, no? So a uh, fair visit that we did with the curator, that, uh, the director of the, of the um, museum uh, was this, um, uh, it was in, in this, like, uh, this was a site for an installation. It is like this, uh, um, like industrial space uh, that was abandoned uh, and where this guy wanted to um, incorporate the, the new headquarters for this museum. No? So what he commissioned to us was to, okay, how would you think a starting point for a headquarters for the frag in this feminist democracy way? No? Uh, so we uh, started thinking, Okay, this is like a like a, uh, this is a ground zero for a, a feminist democracy for uh, storing uh, a new headquarters of the frag, uh, but it is not as a tabula rasa. No, uh, this starting point for a future frag is crossed by a multiplicity of agents. No, there are insects, there are plants. They were there was rain. There are a lot of climatic conditions, and there is soil that have already established a certain uh, relationships uh, that are worth to be taken into account when designing any kind of architecture. No? So in a traditional um, way, uh, what we would do first uh, with this like uh, site was to like flatten the floor, kill all the plants and uh, prevent the rain for, from coming in. No? So we wanted to do the opposite. No? We wanted to prevent the soil, and also keep keep on like uh, in, including the rain inside, no? So we created this, uh, what we call the um, cohabitation dome uh, that was not touching the floor. It was like hanging from the ceiling of the, of the frag of, the, of this space uh, in order not to touch, uh, not to kill any species that uh, would live, uh, have lived there before. Uh, in order to like, uh, and the purpose of the dome would be to stimulate the growing of those species um, and to bring more biodiversity to all this like uh, complex uh, place. No, so we would include again a whole set of technologies that are imported from the agricultural industry in order to achieve the optimum conditions of comfort of comfort of these inhabitants. No. So this is the result, no? So uh, this dome would be hanging from this like uh, crane that will be moving around the, the um, space uh, and would have like a, a, a different set uh, of uh, technologies uh, that would uh, stimulate the growth of the plants, no? Uh, so growing lights, uh, thermal lights, UV lights, a uh, uh, set of... Uh, uh, fans, no, uh, that would like uh, encourage like uh, uh, these kinds of uh, non-human relationships inside the 
the um, uh, place, no? Uh, so, no, so in order like uh, to answer to the question of this like uh, curator, uh, Abdel Kader Damani, uh, we would say, uh, we imagine a society supported on caring, uh, based on cooperation instead of competition, based on symbiosis or mutualism instead of extractivism and uh, standing up for the weak, not, not just for women, but for all uh, other minorities that uh, that uh, didn't have a voice in the other kind of democracy, no? in the patriarchal democracy. No? So uh, uh, this is like a small video of how the rain was touching the, um, the place. Uh, also with a lot of grown plants there and uh, some of the details of of the technologies no like a very lightweight structure uh, tensed with chains um the fans etc no and uh, uh in order to like uh the, i'm going to change a little bit of the kind of projects we have been looking into projects that uh are very much commissioned by cultural institutions, very much uh, looking into uh, speculative uh, um, futures, um, into uh, ecology and so on. Well, I'm going to show you now two projects uh, that are more like linked to the present that are like uh, have, uh, have uh, that are like uh, two renovations that have two clients, etc. Uh, that also do with ecology but they have to do more with the present. Uh, they are less speculative, but also again, like uh, uh, trying to be very intersectional, uh, working with ecology, with uh, contemporary thinking, with feminism, et cetera. No? So uh, when we explain these two projects, we start like with this uh, sentence that uh, uh, is attributed to Frederick Jameson, but also Gijek said and so on. Uh, which is like uh, it is easier to imagine an end of the world than an end to the capitalism and it usually comes with this meme uh, uh, in this period of Aqualta in Venice uh, where the plaza uh, of San Marco gets uh, flooded uh, due to climate change but of course the bags of Louis Vuitton are not going to be get wet no uh, so that is why the end of the world will come before than the end of capitalism. Uh, but uh, we would like to state that uh, we think that is not true. Uh, the end of capitalism will come before the end of the world. And that is because of this diagram, which is the peak oil diagram, where, which is the diagram like through the years. You see these axes there uh, on how uh, it is more or less efficient to extract uh, oil, no. So uh, we came to the peak of oil in the year 2011. There is still a lot of oil in the world, but it is getting harder and harder to extract it. And uh, the expert says that in uh, 2018 will be the limit uh, time uh, to extract uh, oil, no. So we will have to think of other means of. Uh, of doing, no. Uh, we learned a lot from this, like a uh, book uh, uh, that explains a, a lot about it um, on how the oil is uh, about collapse and so on. And uh, so, uh, when we had this commission of the house, we started like, uh, okay, we have to think on ecological solutions to this, no. So if you Google. Uh, sustainability or so on, uh, you see these two kinds of ways no, of doing. No? On the one hand, uh, solutions that rely on technology. So, okay, you can keep on consuming at the same, um, at the same uh, speed, but if you like generate your own energy and you rely on technology, no problem. Or these other solutions that are like more like uh, the Hobbit house, no. So we were not um, we were not convinced by any of those. So we went to uh, contemporary thinking, ecological thinking. Sorry, because it's in Spanish, but I will I will translate. So there is again these two two ways, no. Like on the one hand, there is this accelerationism. So let's fight this uh, climate change with the same tools that we 
uh, work in with capitalism. Uh, there is this other degrowth um, way, no? So, okay, if we consume less, we produce less emissions, and we keep on like uh, we, we can keep on living in this world altogether, no? So uh, we feel very attracted to both uh, ideas, and we wanted to. Uh, uh, the day after house, which is in the middle, uh, we wanted to incorporate both things to our like uh, work there. No, um, we also like uh, thought of many other aspects in the way that we live our domestic spaces. No, uh, that I will explain like all of this like one by one now. No, um, for instance, uh, regarding the kitchen. No, so we. We looked into okay, what was the most revolutionary uh, change that we did on the kitchens? No, and this in this case is the Frankfurt kitchen, uh, which is 2020. So it's like, uh, we 100, 1920. Uh, uh, so um, already a century ago. Uh, so we thought we should like incorporate something else to the kitchen design. No, this was re very revolutionary, but our kitchens now look very much alike this kitchen no? another thing was about on bedrooms no the fact that we were reading very much uh, silvia federici that stands that um bedrooms uh as we understand them as individual pieces for chambers for sleeping are very much uh 19th century and also very western uh, culture no so we were looking to these kinds of bedrooms uh, of the uh, 15th century where uh, many programs were happening at the same time and uh, they were not that uh, individual etc no or uh, the fact that the that the, the bathrooms the places to bath to uh, for hygiene are uh, very much related in our western culture and catholic culture are always on the darkest places of the house on the less ventilated places of the house, uh, because also this idea of nudity of or intimacy uh, that has to do with like uh, also our Catholic uh, culture, no? So also questioning these kind of things, no? Or the fact that these kind of spaces, these are the Silicon Valley uh, garages of uh, Steve Jobs or uh, Bill Gates uh, that are like. Uh, less like uh, design or they don't have like uh, they, their design applied doesn't have like a um, certain functionality applied are places where many things can happen and, uh, and and we find them also very interesting no or the fact that we in our period we are relying very much in oil in order to condition our houses no and to heat to and to uh, and to uh, chill our houses, uh, we rely very much on oil, no. And these are this is a Swiss stuff, uh, no. There are a lot of like uh, passive or uh, off grid systems of heating and cooling our houses, no. Or the fact that uh, also the relationships with other animals uh, of uh, of, of, of with other species. Uh, historically, we started looking into them on how they also establish with us uh, relationships of mutualism. No, in this case, the animals there are are there in order to hit the humans, and the humans hit the animals also. No, so in order, so the fact that we work with them, like they, they both are having a. Uh, positive uh, output out of this relationship, no? Or also the fact of working with other species uh, in order to regulate clim climate, no? So in this case, this is a Swiss uh, uh, coal stove in in Lisbon, no? Or the fact of um, using ornament, no? That uh, in the modern movement, we stopped uh, using ornament and... and uh, uh, we also wanted to uh, reivindicate it. No? So um, this uh, this is the place where we uh, where we uh, uh, had to do the renovation. It is a, a place in the north of uh, Madrid, um, a block of houses. 
uh, with a very traditional like kind of bourgeois distribution. No, it has two accesses: the service access, the uh, main access. It has like uh, these um, uh, three bathrooms, complete bathrooms with no light, with no ventilation, and none of the rooms are very small. They don't have a cross ventilation, etc. No, uh, so. Uh, this is the, the, the comparison of the two plans. And this is the before and after, no? So the first decision that we took was to build just 50% uh, of the house, no? Uh, just to build it like, uh, if we like every year, I think it is the 21st of April that we say that we have already consumed the resources that the planet can give us uh, in one year. If we consume just half, then we are like on the good way, no? So first of all, we just like built on the this blue hatch uh, uh, area, no? Um, no. So then this summer house would be like a, an exterior place, very raw, and wouldn't be built, no? And in the and then uh, we what we built it was a box, which is a winter house, and another box, which would be the communal bedroom, no? Um, another thing is like to work in these like gradients of temperature. No? So the blue part is this summer house uh, that was not uh, uh, conditioned at all. And then in the other box, uh, which is the winter house where we need a little bit of like uh, warmth, we would work with, um, with uh, other kinds of materials uh, like uh, that would uh, have a lot of inertia and uh, in the other box, the red box, uh, that would be the bedroom, uh, we would need a little bit more of heat and we would do another box like more insulated, no? So this would be the, um, the schema, no? So uh, the first uh, box wouldn't be like uh, built at all. The uh, uh, winter house box would be built with very low carbon emission materials, no? In this case, uh, wood, um, which has a very low footprint and cork, which has an even lower footprint and works very mm, well as an insulation because cork, uh, we just have to cut the crust of the tree and not the whole tree. And uh, the third uh, box uh, would be the bedroom uh, that uh, would be even like uh, warmer and more insulated. No, So uh, this would be the plant of the house. Uh, um, and uh, this would be a view from the summer house of the of what the box uh, is. No, the it is like a very like uh, uh, well insulated uh, box that would be the winter bedroom that would be uh, enjoyed during the bedroom. No, and the summer house would have like uh, we removed the windows and uh, we used uh, yeah just like a very raw material concrete and so on and just with a set of filters of like uh, also coming from the agricultural industry, like the, this uh, curtain or this uh, glass or uh, 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 also a stove. Um, no, all these kind of filters uh, would be like, uh, would be, we would be able to change the temperature, no? And this would be the, the bath, no? Uh, that we included on the, uh, less like uh, intimate part of the house, but also the most uh, appreciated, no? In order to work with this concept of intimacy. And we would be getting inside the house. And um, uh, this would be the winter house, uh, which would be like uh, super insulated with this uh, cork and this uh, wood, uh, pine tree wood. And uh, this could be some details. I'm going a little bit faster now because uh, I'm running out of time. Um, and this would be the uh, the in, inside the winter house, the communal bedroom, no? So uh, the client had uh, like they, they were a couple with a baby and a and a cat. Um, so uh, uh, we also like this communal bedroom. Uh, has this like uh, elevated uh, floor so that the uh, cat and the baby could go uh, playing uh, 
underneath. And uh, it is also communal because the clients wanted it like that, but also because of thermal purposes, uh, it is like uh, more like uh, effective to sleep together. And um, and also it was more insulated with uh, these like uh, blankets, no? Um, and the kitchen uh, is visible from any part of the house. And uh, this is from the access. Uh, so we wanted to also invite all the members of the house uh, to participate on the kitchen. So we would make it available from every single corner of the house. No? And uh, the working area, like it is like on this table of 75 centimeters and just these working places are in 90 centimeters high. So that also the kitchen would turn into the into the table of uh, dining or working or etc., and would be even more open to the house. No, this could be the access, and also in this place in the summer house, it would be like populated uh, with like other species uh, in order to cool down the temperatures. No, in the uh, summer, no, with uh, no, and super fast uh, to show you like a house. Uh, where we included these uh, same principles of the uh, uh, the day after house, but uh, the aim was the the client had a very low budget. No, in this case, ten k. No, uh, so uh, this is a little bit the breakdown of the um, of the budgets, um, and it was a quite <laughs> sorry. Uh, small house uh, in the alcohol bar uh, uh, neighborhood where the guy wanted to um, to do uh, do a home for him, but with this low budget. No? So in this case, again, we work with thermal gradients for the functional and programmatic configuration of the house. So we included this like a uh, distribution uh, warmer place. Uh, the red would be the, um, the bedroom and all the rest wouldn't be um, uh, conditioned. No? Um, the, another strategy wa was to elevate the building elements of the house uh, using uh, recycled uh, table legs from Ikea. And like that we would allow the passage of water and electricity installations without the need of making grooves on the walls. No? Uh, the third thing that we included was the reduction of the material palette. Uh, instead of working in this case with pine, we work with MDF uh, in order to make it like super cheap. Uh, and uh, the insulation would be done with like um, a sheep wool. Uh, this would be the interior. And uh, in order to like also accomplish the budget, uh, we eliminated the, um, the new coating, coatings like the paint, the plastic, the tiles that would be done in the future. And uh, we just like uh, cleaned, uh, no, the, we, we left the traces of the previous partitions and floorings, etc. No? Uh, again, we included this like more hedonistic and playful vision of the bathroom and kitchen spaces. No, the kitchen is facing the window. The mm, the bath is also there is a bath. No, uh, which normally in this kind of places we, you don't have it. The small uh, buildings we we don't have it. Um, and uh, the kitchen is again like uh, understood as a, a space without associated gender. There is this open kitchen configuration that encourages equitable uh, use of this space uh, by different members of the house. And uh, of course, the last, um, the last uh, 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 point in order to achieve this uh, low budget was the self-construction. No? So uh, it is a reform made uh, exclusively through dry assembly work. And uh, like that, we could incorporate the non-experts in the construction processes. No, we are super used to uh, build our furnitures from IKEA, and this was uh, the same. No, a collaboration between us and the client uh, after doing this CNC uh, work uh, that you already know very much. And once on site, uh, just simply using standard screws, uh, we assembled uh, the piece. No. And uh, I think I'm going to leave it here because I'm running out of time. I, I wanted to show you uh, some, some other things, but I'm going to, sorry, leave it here. <laughs>